uh, here I show you uh, the interferometric capabilities of synthetic aperture radar. When we are using two satellites, uh, we can build up in the space an interferometer, and so according to the um, to the coherent nature of electromagnetic waves, we are able to um, analyze to analyze interferometric pattern here. This is the phase, these are the phase fringes of the data, and so we can use this information to retrieve topographic mapping. Uh, we use topo topographic mapping in order to perform infrastructure monitoring, uh, so uh, because uh, interf interferometric procedures is, is very efficient and very sensible because we are uh, we are able to detect uh, uh, displacement of uh, large infrastructure that are in the order of uh, one millimeter. It means that, that if the infra infrastructures move away or towards the sensors, also if one of one millimeter, uh, the satellite is able to detect this movement. Uh, yes, of course, uh, it is possible also to detect, uh, uh, let's say, crude oil ex extraction while we uh, perform extraction of uh, uh, crude oil pockets here. We extract the material and, of course, the surface of the earth will uh, perform a subsidence, and this subsidence, uh, in terms of displacement, uh, it is uh, possible to detect, it, detect uh, this uh, movement from the Earth. So this is uh, just a brief uh, description of the state of the art of synthetic aperture radar. Uh, you can see that there are only uh, sur uh, superficial interaction uh, 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 because we are using electromagnetic waves. But what we did, we did this. Uh, according to the physics, uh, we can see that uh, all the images are affected by movement. It means that everything is moving. And so it, um, uh, it was possible to extract the so-called acoustic information from synthetic aperture radar data. Uh, this is, uh, here I show you uh, two types of uh, SAR data where we have a special projection with uh, uh, high layover effect, no layover effect, but with forest shortening here. So we can use a different projection of synthetic aperture radar data. Uh, what we did, we, did, we, we, ha we uh, have um, development, developed a technique in order to extract the acoustic information uh, from data. Why? Because according to the uh, image formation procedure, it means that everything has to be without motion. If something moves, with a certain um, amplification, we can see the, those movement on the image. So, according to a procedure called Doppler subaperture, um, Doppler subaperture filtering, we have transformed a static image into a, a live streaming inside the time of integration along the orbit, which is approximately 15 seconds. According to this, we have uh, um, uh, we were able we was able to extract the acoustic information that belongs between zero hertz to approximately 30 or 40 kilohertz. So we are uh, performing a um, let's say a, here a acoustic um, a listening of the earth inside this uh, bandwidth, which is the Doppler bandwidth. So, uh, we have, uh, let's say, designed a, a, a microphone where we have the satellite that uh, um, transmitting the light, so the electromagnetic frequency from the space, will grab directly in terms of backscattering energy also the acoustic information. Why acoustics? Acoustics are very important because they are greedy of matter. Acoustics are propagating all inside the matter, and the more, um, the more is dense and the higher is the velocity of the uh, acoustic waves. Uh, yes, uh, our, pat uh, our um, technique has been patent, patented in uh, Malta. 
which is uh, still active, and we are proceeding a PCT, so for an international application of the patent. Uh, the first, uh, in, the first um, experiments that we have done were to extrapolate the acoustic information from high voltage power grids. So we were able to listen by, from, uh, from the space the ripple of the, of the uh, electric energy directly from space and so recording on uh, this data on, uh, uh, on our disk. Uh, then uh, we have moved uh, into perform the so-called tomographic inver inversion because uh, the acoustic uh, were grabbed from the earth and according to specific uh, uh, tomographic lines uh, we were able to scan below the earth. Sorry if I, uh, if I am going a bit, uh, uh, if, I, if I am hurrying up because uh, we don't have enough time to uh, explain, explain uh, in detail each uh, slide. Uh, we start uh, our experiments in laboratory where, where here we have uh, simulated, we are simulating uh, everything, so we have a sensor and so we have uh, something that is vibrating and we choose it to, uh, to design a specific uh, water, uh, uh, here we have water and so according to uh, some movement here we were able to detect specific voids of, uh, located here and here. So these are the vibrations that we, are, uh, we were uh, recording from the top. And so this is the raw data. And then we have uh, retrieved the so-called Fourier transform in order to uh, rebuild the vibrational trend, the vibrational um, reconstruction of the table where the uh, water was contained. And so we were able to make the picture from the top without seeing anything what was below of the table this is just to show you that our technique bond from laboratory and then we move directly in space because, because we have applied the same algorithms uh, and uh, we uh, um, performed the specific procedure in order to retrieve the acoustic information watching the synthetic aperture analyzing or processing, reprocessing synthetic aperture radar data. We moved uh, in United States where we uh, ordered the specific uh, SAR images. This is the uh, Carlin tunnel which, is, uh, tunnel, which is in uh, United States, in Nevada. And here we have uh, here we have uh, uh, railways that uh, passes inside the tunnel. And so we, uh, uh, we worked in order to see what there was uh, inside the mountain. Uh, yes, uh, here we have uh, the tomogra our tomographic results here and we are able to see the tunnel, the tunnel that is passing inside the mountain here and here. This is the radar images, are two radar images of the, uh, the area, the test area that we have done. Then we uh, worked uh, making other experiments, and so we moved uh, where I've born in, in Italy, in uh, L'Aquila, uh, where uh, here we have uh, the Gran Sasso mountain, which is nearly 3,000 meters tall, height of height and inside the, mount, the mountain there is a laboratory, a physic, physics laboratory where they study the neutrinos. Uh, this is the schematic representation of the laboratory that is inside the mountain. Uh, yes, here we have a, a tomographic reconstruction of the Gran Sasso and we can see that we are detecting, detecting the laboratory. INFN, Istituto Nazionale di Fisica Nucleare. And then also the, uh, a piece of the tunnel that goes, that passes through the Gran Sasso. Here we have a zoom, this is the Gran, the Gran Sasso Laboratory and this is the, the schematic representation of the Gran Sasso Laboratory. 
Uh, then uh, we made other experiments. This is a dam. Uh, this is the Mosul dam that is located in Iraq, uh, where we have uh, the optical satellite image, and this is the synthetic aperture radar sat uh, satellite image. We can see they are very similar, but the bandwidth are completely different.